What's up guys, welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. Uh, today we're back in the garage working on the CB550 Barn to Brat project. Uh, today I wanna do a few things. I wanna do a compression test to kind of further along our uh, testing and overall um, kind of rundown of overview of the bike and what condition it's in. So far everything's looked really, really good. Um, so since I have a compression tester, I'm just gonna go ahead, it's gonna take five minutes and I'll walk you guys through uh, real quick on how I do it, um, just to make sure everything looks good. Then we're gonna start tearing down the bike. Um, I wanna give it a little bit of a, a weight loss program before I try to get it up on my motorcycle table, um, just because there's no use in having extra weight on my ramp and everything if I don't need to. So we're gonna to start to pull apart the back of the bike, pull apart the exhaust, uh, and then we'll see how much farther we get from there. Let's do it. All right guys, so to do a compression test, you're obviously gonna need a compression tester uh, kit or tool. Uh, this is the one I have, it's from OTC. Um, I'll throw a link, I'll actually, in every one of these videos, I'll have a, my Amazon link. And basically that link brings you to all the tools, all the parts, all of everything I use that's available on Amazon. Uh, and you can click through there and uh, if you end up buying something, it'll help support the channel. Uh, but I did buy everything on there with my own money, so it's not like I'm, you know, not yet being sponsored by anything, but um, so this is a really good compression tester that I've had for a few years. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. What I'm gonna do is start off by pulling all the spark plug boots off and then actually pulling all four spark plugs out. Uh, that way the engine will turn over more freely uh, and then we'll just go one by one and test each cylinder and uh, hopefully get a, a very close reading and um, we'll see exactly what we get. So let's pull these boots off, pull the plugs out and then get going. Got the spark plugs out, went ahead and pulled the gas tank off uh, to make it easy to access. Just a 18 millimeter uh, with a small extension is good to, uh, to get them all out. Uh, take this opportunity to inspect each spark plug. Uh, if they're really, really black, uh, that means the engine or that particular cylinder might be running really rough or um, really rich, I mean. Uh, and if they're white and kind of um, burnt looking, it might be running too lean. Uh, so it can kind of help you figure out how the overall engine's running. This one actually seems to be doing pretty well. I expected number two to be a little bit lean uh, because of that cracked intake boot that we found last time, but it looks like uh, it's actually not letting in much air, which is why it seems to be running all right. And uh, the spark plug looks fine. So we're gonna go ahead and move along with the compression test. So we're just gonna go one by one um, screw in the uh, little adapter here into the spark plug hole, connect our gauge to the other end. Then we're gonna turn over the motor using the, uh, you know, the factory electric start. Uh, if you have a kickstart bike only, you can kick it over as well. Uh, you're just looking to get enough uh, rotations out of it to build up a good amount of compression. It takes more than one compression stroke to, uh, to get a good reading. Just, we're just gonna make sure we keep the uh, ignition off uh, just so we don't have any kind of, uh, you know, power running through our coils or anything like that. Uh, obviously it won't start without spark plugs, but um, we're just gonna keep that off and we can still turn the motor over uh, just using the button there. Quick time travel to the next day. I was actually editing this video uh, and realized a mistake I made when I was doing the compression test uh, the first time. Uh, so the first time I did everything right except for one key part, which is you have to hold the throttle open when you're cranking the engine, that way you can get sufficient air through the carburetors and into the cylinders. Otherwise, they're having to fight their way through closed uh, throttle valves. So when I did it all before, I got anywhere between uh, 85 and about 100 PSI. Um, but let's see what happens when I hold the throttle open uh, and see if we get actually a better reading. hundred and thirty five that's a whole heck of a lot better than eighty five so let me run through and check the rest of these hundred and thirty hundred and thirty again hmm. but hundred and twenty nine hundred and thirty all right so we were all uh, right at hundred and thirty um, I mean I think there was less than probably three or four psi fluctuation uh, between all of them. So I'm gonna call that uh, great. So normally somewhere around 10% uh, variance is fine. Uh, if you were to see any lower than that, um, I would say anything 
below, and, and everybody has kind of a different opinion in this, but anything below maybe 115 or so, um, you should be somewhat concerned about. It could be just a simple valve adjustment. Uh, even like motors have been sitting for a long time. Sometimes those rings are just uh, not seating very well. So, and again, this is a cold compression test. Um, so you can put a little bit of oil in the cylinders and, and run the bike a little bit more and trying to get those uh, piston wa uh, walls kind of coated and, and um, sealed properly against the rings. Uh, if you put too much oil in there, it'll way blow up your reading. You'll start reading like 200 PSI uh, because the oil will be sealing too much. So the oil is really just to help to lubricate the rings and just kind of get them uh, seating properly more than it is to create any um, extra compression. So I'm super happy with 130 PSI. So we'll uh, flash back to yesterday and start to uh, tear apart the back half of this bike. We're going to go ahead and uh, pull the exhaust off. It's uh, just 10 millimeter nuts on each side of the exhaust flange. Uh, then on this, each individual cylinder has its own exhaust tube, um, which is kind of a cool design. We will be replacing that because these are really small tubes, plus they're in really terrible shape. Uh, thirdly, they're not nearly loud enough for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these off, put them on the shelf with the rest of my exhaust hoard um, because we end up keeping everything for some reason. Um, I'm going to go ahead and soak these exhaust flanges in this product called Metal Rescue that I've, uh, I just got. So I normally I use Evapo Rust. I have a big bottle of it over there. Um, but Metal Rescue reached out and wanted to uh, see if I wanted to try it out. So we're gonna try it out and see if it works as well as Evapo Rust does. And if it does, I'll tell you. And if not, I'll still tell you. Well, she's going through quite a weight loss. Pulled off all the exhaust. That thing's gotta weigh 40 pounds probably between all of them. Maybe not that much, but uh, quite a bit. Uh, so that's really cleaning up it a lot. We're going to need to end up losing the center stand uh, because it does come up and hit the chain without the exhaust to stop it, uh, which is fine. Most of the bikes I build, I end up getting rid of the center stand anyway because it just kind of cleans up underneath the bike. Um, now we're going to go ahead and start to pull off the whole rear fender. I'm going to use some tape and just kind of tape off uh, what each one of these wires is for. I mean, a lot of this we're gonna end up having to redo anyway because it's in pretty bad shape. It's got some Home Depot special blue crimp connections on it. And I like to use um, OE type bullet connectors or I even got uh, this whole kit of uh, kind of Honda style uh, pin out connectors as well uh, so that we can kind of mimic some of the, uh, the factory uh, wiring connections. So let's go ahead and start to pull off the back there, but we are gonna, like I said, make sure we label those wires so that when we go back there in a couple of months, uh, we'll know kind of what's what. Got the back end about as torn down as we can go right now. Um, I'm probably gonna pull the battery out since we won't be starting it anymore uh, until it's back assembled. Uh, my frame hoop is on the way. Uh, so is my seat. A bunch of parts already came in. So we have, uh, I mean, my electronic ignition, modern, regulator rectifier, uh, new lithium ion battery, which is uh, pretty awesome, super small, um, but it has uh, the same cold cranking amps uh, that the stock battery has, so we can continue to uh, keep our electric start. Uh, also, these uh, batteries are internally voltage regulated, uh, meaning they're not as sensitive as some other lithium ions uh, to the old charging systems. So even though with a modern regulator rectifier, we'd probably be fine, uh, but it's just in kind of an extra added level of security. Uh, like I said, these are kind of internally regulated too, so you can't overcharge them. Uh, then we also have new chain, oil filter, yeah, like I said, fork seals, all new jets. Everything. So I'm going to do uh, in the next video, I'm going to tackle the front fork seals. Uh, I want to uh, maybe modify this front fender. Normally I pull them off completely, but I want to get your guys' opinion. So also leave a comment below uh, if you think I should chop this front fender. So I was thinking about doing like a nice kind of circle chop, maybe around here and around there. I know I'm not going to keep the giant stock one, but since it will be doing a little bit of off-road, some protection from rocks and stuff flying up might be nice. Um, so let me know what you guys think about doing that. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna do the front fork seals and I'm gonna do a full breakdown of all of the parts. So I'm gonna lay them kind of all out uh, on the ground uh, as soon as I get them all in and we'll make sure that that's included in the video. I don't know if it's gonna make it in the next one or not. Uh, it just depends on how long it takes for the rest of the parts to get here. Uh, yeah, then we're ready to put it up on the table and start to pull apart the front end. 
I think I'm gonna replace these giant speedometers uh, with some smaller ones, or speedometer and tack. Um, so I need to kind of uh, look into that, see what I wanna do, and we got a ton hey more guys, work. We got so. our compression test done and the rear end torn down. Um, so we're definitely making some good progress on this bike in only a couple of weeks. Um, so like I mentioned in the next video, we'll start to tackle some of the front end. Let me know about that front fender. Let me know your guys' suggestion on dual sport tires. And uh, well, let me know of any suggestions or of anything you want to make sure that I do cover uh, in this build, something you're curious about and something that uh, you, know, you wanna make sure you can uh, see how to do it. Um, I am uh, just about to finalize a new vendor for my shirts. Um, so those will be up very, very soon. I would say probably in the next video, I'll make an announcement that they're uh, totally ready. Some stuff is in stock on my website now. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, uh, make sure to do so. It's just classicarctane.com or a link right at the end of this video. Make sure to uh, subscribe and follow along and uh, we'll see you guys very soon.